Hello students, today from your supplementary reader, Footprints Without Feet, we are going to be reading chapter number 10 which is a play. And what is the title of the play? The Book That Saved the Earth. Let's find out who are the characters in this play. First, you have a historian, then you have Lieutenant Iota and the leader great and mighty think tank, Sergeant Oop, Apprentice Noodle and Captain Omega. The play is based at what time? It is about the 25th century and the play begins when a historian is standing at the Museum of Ancient History. So she is looking at the audience and she tells the audience that the 20th century was called the era of the book. So in the 25th century, she is telling about the 20th century. And she tells the audience that in those days, that is the 20th century, there were books about everything that taught people how to and when to and where to and why to. She elaborates to say that these books illustrated, educated, punctuated and even decorated. Now we come to the 25th century where Martians tried to invade earth in 2040. But the strangest thing was that the invasion never happened. Why? Because there was a book that saved the earth. So let's find out that how a book saved the earth. Let's start reading the play. So this is scene one. Think tank, the great mighty think tank who is the leader. He is seated on a raised box, arms folded and he has a huge egg shaped head and he wears a robe decorated with stars and circles just like a typical alien. Apprentice Noodle stands beside him at an elaborate switchboard. So let us start reading this play. So Noodle now he is talking to his leader that is the great mighty think tank and he says oh great and mighty think tank the most powerful and intelligent creature in the whole universe. What are your orders? So think tank, he says, you left out part of my salutation. So Noodle, who is a trainee in the Martian station, he says, go over the whole thing again. And Noodle says, it shall be done so. And then he says, Oh, great and mighty think tank, ruler of Mars and her two moons, most powerful and intelligent creature in the whole universe. And he becomes tired. And then he says, what are your orders? So think tank says, that's better. Noodle, I wish to be placed in communication with our manned space probe to the ridiculous little planet we are going to put under our generous rulership. What do they call it again? So Noodle says, Earth, your intelligence? Think tank. Earth? Of course. You see how insignificant the place is? But first, something important. My mirror. I wish to consult my mirror. Noodle says, It shall be done, sir. And he hands over the mirror to Think Tank. So Think Tank says, looking at the mirror, 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 in my hand, who is the most fantastically intellectual gifted being in the land? And there's a voice that comes off stage. And the voice off stage says, you sir. So Think Tank, he smacks the mirror quicker and he says, answer quicker next time. So you see how self-obsessed think tank is, always looking for praises. And he says, I hate a slow mirror. 
and then he admires himself in the mirror. And then, ah, there I am. Are we Martians not a handsome race? So Think Tank is asking, are we not a handsome race? So much more attractive than those ugly earthlings with their tiny heads. Noodle, you keep on exercising your mind and someday you will have a balloon brain just like mine. So Noodle, he says, oh, I hope so, mighty Think Tank. I hope so. Think Tank replies, now contact the space probe. I want to invade the primitive ball of mud called Earth before lunch. So imagine the amount of planning Think Tank has in his head. He calls Earth as the ball of mud and he says, I want to invade this planet before lunch. He's in such a hurry. So Noodle says, it shall be done, sir. And then he adjusts the switchboard so that a communication with planet Earth can be made. So now when Think Tank expresses his desire to invade Earth and that too before lunch, a few seconds later what happens? So Mars Space Control and the Canterville Public Library, these are the two places where people are trying to communicate with each other. And comes in Captain Omega. He stands at the center of the stage and he's opening and closing a card. So he's holding something in his hand and he's opening it, closing it, opening it, cl closing it. And he also sees a set of drawers. So he opens those drawers and he's looking very confused. Captain Omega is completely confused. He looks at the other people, Lieutenant Iota, and all of them are opening these cards, closing them, opening the drawers, closing them. They really don't know what is happening. So Noodle, who's at the space station, he's adjusting the knobs. And he says, I have a close sighting of the space cruiser. And Think Tank, he puts a pair of enormous goggles and turns towards the stage to watch. They seem to have entered some sort of earth structure. Think Tank, excellent, make voice contact. So now Think Tank is extremely happy because his group of Martian, his army of Martian has entered the space. And he tells Noodle that you make a voice contact with them. So Noodle, he holds a microphone and he says, Mars Space Control calling the crew of Probe 1. Mars Space Control calling the crew of Probe 1. Come in, Captain Omega and give us your location. So just the way people talk when they have to communicate during an invasion. So Omega, he speaks into a disc which is tied through a chain around him. And he says, Captain Omega to Mars Space Control, Lieutenant Iota, Sergeant Oop and I have arrived on Earth without incident. We have taken shelter in this square place. Have you any idea where we are, Lieutenant Iota? So now a voice contact is developed between the people or the Martians who've come to planet Earth and the Mars Space Control. So Lieutenant Iota says, I can't figure out Captain. And he holds up a book counting the thousand peculiar of these items. So there are about thousands of books at a place where they have landed. And as we read in the introduction part, they landed in a library. And he says, this place must be some sort of storage barn. What do you think, Sergeant Oop? So Sergeant Oop says, I haven't a clue. I have been to seven galaxies, but I've never seen anything like this. Maybe they are hats. So Sergeant Oop thinks that this is a hat and he puts it on his head. And then Captain Omega says, perhaps the great mighty think tank will give us the benefit of his thought on this matter. So now Captain Omega 
and the other Martians who've landed in a library, they are looking up to their leader think tank so that they can get proper suggestions as to what exactly are these things. So think tank says, elementary my dear Omega, hold on one of those items up so that I may view it closely. So Captain Omega, he holds a book on the palm of her hand. Yes, yes, I understand now. Since earth creatures are always eating, the place in which you find yourself is undoubtedly a crude refreshment stand. So Captain Omega to Iota and Oop says, he says we are in a refreshment stand as suggested by Mighty Think Tank. So Captain Oop says, well, the earthlings certainly have a strange diet. Think Tank replies, that item in your hand is called a sandwich. So Omega, he nods, says, a sandwich? And Captain Iota is also confused, a sandwich? And Sergeant Oop, who still has this book on his head, he takes it off from his head and he says, a sandwich? Think Tank says, sandwiches are the staple diet on earth and you need to have a closer look at it. There are two slices of which, which are called as bread and between them, there is some sort of filling. Captain Omega says, that is correct, sir. Think Tank says, to confirm my opinion, I order you to eat it. And now Omega says, eat it? Think Tank says, do you doubt mighty Think Tank? Captain Omega says, oh no, no, but poor Lieutenant has not had her breakfast. So Lieutenant Iota, I order you to eat this sandwich. So Iota says, eat it? Oh, Captain, it's a very great honor to be the first Martian to eat a sandwich. I'm sure, but how can I be so impolite as to eat it before my sergeant? So now they are trying to pass on this sandwich, what they think as a sandwich to each other. So Sergeant Oop, I order you to eat this sandwich immediately. Oop. Sergeant Oop is making a face. Who, Lieutenant? Me? So Iota and Omega says, for the glory of the Mars, Oop. So Oop says, yes, of course, but he's not really happy. And he opens his mouth and he takes a bite of the corner of the book. And he starts chewing it and then he has to swallow it. So Omega and Iota ask Oop, are you fine? But Oop, he starts coughing. So Think Tank, who's watching all this, he says, was it not delicious, Sergeant Oop? Oop, saluting. That is correct, sir. It was not delicious. I don't know how the earthlings can get those sandwiches down without water. They are dry as Martian dust. Noodle, sir, sir, Great and mighty think tank, I beg your pardon, but an insignificant bit of data has floated into my mind about those sandwiches. So think tank, he says, it can't be worth much, but go ahead, give us your trifling bit of data. So Noodle says, well, sir, I have seen surveyor films of those sandwiches. I noticed that the earthlings did not eat them. They used this as some sort of communication device. Think tank, <laughs> naturally, that was my next point. These are actually communication sandwiches. Think tank is never wrong. Who is never wrong? So all these people, they salute him and in a chorus they say, great and mighty think tank is never wrong. So think tank says, Therefore, I order you to listen to them. So Omega says, listen to them? Iota and Oop, 
to each other puzzled. Listen to them. So now Captain Omega, Sergeant Oob and Iota, they are all very confused. So Think Tank says, do you have marbles in your ears? I said, listen to them. So Omega says, it shall be done, sir. And they all take the book and they try to listen to them. Iota, he whispers to Omega, do you hear anything? Did you hear anything or not? So Omega says, nothing. Do you hear anything? Oop, oop, not a thing. So Omega and Iota say, shh, because they are trying to listen to these communication sandwiches, which are actually books. So Think Tank says, well, well, report to me. What do you hear? So Omega says, nothing, sir. Perhaps we are not on the correct frequency. So Iota says, nothing, sir. Perhaps the earthlings have sharper ears than we do. And Oop also says, I don't hear a thing. Maybe these sandwiches don't make sounds. So Think Tank, he says, what? Does somebody suggest that the mighty Think Tank made a mistake? Omega says, oh no, no, sir. We will keep listening. Noodle, please excuse me your brilliance, he says. So now Noodle is trying to talk to Mighty Think Tank. And he says, please excuse me your brilliance, but a cloudy piece of information is twirling around my head. So Think Tank says, well, twirl it out, Noodle, and I will clarify it to you. So Noodle says, I seem to recall that the earthlings did not listen to these sandwiches. They opened them and watched them. So Think Tank says, yes, that is quite correct. I will clarify that for you. Captain Omega, those sandwiches are not for ear communication. They are for eye communication. So now you see whatever Noodle is saying, the mighty Think Tank, he's just reiterating them as his own suggestion. Now, Captain Omega, take that large colorful sandwich over there. It appears to be important. Tell me what do you observe. So, Omega, he pulls out a large volume. He pulls out a book and he tries to look what is written in that communication sandwich. And he wants to see how well he can read it. So, Captain Omega says, it appears to contain pictures of earthlings. Iota says, there seems to be some sort of code. So, Think Tank, he says, code? I told you this was important. Describe the code. So, Oop, he starts reading the line and he looks at the dots along the pictures. Think Tank says, perhaps the earthlings are not as primitive as we have thought. We must break the code. So whatever is written in the book, these Martians are thinking that this is some sort of code. Noodle says, forgive me your cleverness, but did not the chemical department give our space people vitamins to increase their intelligence? Think Tank says, stop. A thought of magnificent brilliance has come to me. Space people, our chemical department, has given you vitamin to increase your intelligence. So now Think Tank tells them that you eat those vitamin capsules quickly so that you can increase your intelligence. So Omega says, it shall be done, sir. And then they take out the vitamin capsules and they swallow it. So what happens next? And now they open their eyes wide, their heads shake and they put their hands to the foreheads. So think tank, excellent. Now decipher that code. So all of them, again in a chorus, they say, it shall be dancer. So Omega says, aha. Iota says, oh ho. And then Oop, he burst into laughter. Think tank says, what does it say? Tell me this instant. Transcribe. Omega says, yes, sir. And she reads it with great seriousness. So what is written in that book? 
the first lines that omega reads are as follows mistress mary quite contrary how does your garden grow with cockle shells and silver bells and pretty maids all in a row oop he says ha ha imagine that pretty maids growing in a garden think tank he says stop there is no time for you to levity there's no time for you to enjoy all this think tank says don't you realize the seriousness of the discovery the earthlings have discovered how to combine agriculture and mining they can actually grow crops of rare metals such as silver and cock shells also and they can grow high explosive also noodle contact your invasion fleet so noodle says they are ready to go down and take over earth sir think tank says tell them to hold tell them new information has come and they try to read it so iota says yes sir she reads very gravely hey diddle diddle the cat and the fiddle the cow jumped over the moon the little dog laughed to see such a sport and the dish ran away with a spoon so oop he starts laughing the dish ran away with a spoon so think tank he gets angry he says cease your laughter this is more and more alarming the earthlings have reached a high level of civilization didn't you hear they have taught their domesticated animals music culture and space techniques even their dogs have a sense of humor why at this very moment they may be launching an interplanetary attack of millions of cows notify the invasion fleet no invasion today oop and then he says transcribe the next code so oop says yes sir so what is the next code that oop reads humpty dumpty sat on a wall humpty dumpty had a great fall all the king's horses and king's men cannot put humpty dumpty together again oh look sir here is a picture of humpty dumpty so oop says that sir the next code that i have read there is a picture also so he turns the picture of humpty dumpty towards think tank and the audience so this is what the picture was along with the code of humpty dumpty so think tank the moment he looks at the picture he says it's me it's me the great mighty think tank just like a balloon brain the earthlings have seen me and they are after me had a great fall that means they plan to capture mars central control and me it's an invasion of mars noodle prepare a space capsule for me i must escape without delay so now think tank looking at the picture of humpty dumpty gets scared because he thinks that the people on earth are trying to attack him and he goes on to say space people you must leave earth at once but be sure to remove all your traces of your visit the earthlings must not know that i know noodle says where shall we go sir so think tank says a hundred and millions mile away from mars order the invasion fleet to evacuate the entire planet of mars we are heading to alpha century a hundred and million miles away so noodle he helps think tank escape from the mars station and go really far far away so now think tank he decides to cancel the invasion on planet earth and now historian enters the stage and says and that's how one dusty book of old nursery rhymes saved the world from martian invasion and do you know what was the name of the book the name of the book was mother goose so dear learners next time when you want to run away from your books you want to avoid reading your books remember it's a book that saved the earth and it is this book only which will or which might save your life so happy learning and thank you so much